always want to know what's going on with Turkey Day. Let me just say that we lost last week. And Webster has become, first of all, does anybody here live in Webster? Yes! Killer! <laughs> Killer! Here's the basic rules of this school. I tried to get this put into the dress code, and Jim was on the administrative team, and they wouldn't go for it because they didn't think it was funny. And I said, well, I'm not being funny. I wanted to get no orange in our dress school dress code. And so we didn't get it there. Sure, but we got it there de facto because any kid who wore orange to school knew that they were going to get called out by Dr. Holly. And in fact, the one time when I got a little carried away, we were at PTO school, and the PTO president happened to be wearing orange. And I introduced her and I said, You can never do this again. So it is a big deal. The rivalry is huge. You can get on the announcements for a million reasons. The morning announcements are a big deal. They're on video, and we do it to recognize kids. If you're a National Merit Scholar, or if you're all state in the orchestra, or all kinds of academic things, but the one certain way to get on the morning announcements at any level in any sport is beating Webster Groves. <laughs> so kids know that will be tugging on me. Dr. Holly, Dr. Holly, did you hear that the freshman boys lacrosse team beat Webster yesterday? <laughs> and I said, no, I didn't. But they said, well, you be sure to be at the announcements today because we're coming on. I said, well, yes, you are. <laughs> so that's, that's been a fun part of, the, of carrying on that friendly rivalry. Um, what else? So let me just tell you a little bit about the Pioneer Circle. In 1960, these re reunions became, or the tour became a big part of the reunions probably three or four years ago. I know some of you said you were here with Franklin ten years ago. Maybe it was me, but it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a part of everybody's reunion until about four or five years ago. And Jill and I were just talking. We might have to do something differently because we've gone from tours of 10 to 20 where it's really easy to take that many people around to group this size, and last week was this size, it's kind of part of the deal. Anyway, um, when the gym was built three years ago, this was an open space, and Jim and I walked out here and said, we've got to do something in this space. And we didn't know what, what it was. And he had an idea of a bronze pioneer 10-foot high sculpture until he and my wife went out one day to find one, and it was a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Maybe we won't do the uh, pioneer, but we'll, he can tell you if about you that. Ever, if you ever want one, I can build one you for you a whole lot less, because I have to build the one that. that uh, well, guess what? I'm retiring, so you can talk. <laughs> I was in there. Yeah. Okay, wait. We got to keep going. Okay. We got to keep going. You can talk to us after. So, in the class of '68. We had no idea what we were going to do, but the class of 68 came along and, and we, we just we said, if you give us $6,800, we're going to do something and we'll recognize your class. We literally didn't know what we were going to do, but this was the space. So the class of 69, now this was um, Chipperfield. This is one of the Chipperfield brothers, and his little brother was in the class of 69. So the two brothers had a challenge of 6,800, and then they had to have 6,900. And so we began to pool this money together. And in the class of 69, a guy named Jim Fetterman was on that tour. He was a landscape architect. To make a very long story short, he said, I have not been on this campus since I graduated 40 years ago. I'm a retired landscape architect. Let me help you with this space. So what you see here is a compilation of classes who've given money and then the vision of, um, of uh, Jim Fetterman. And, and then we pool this money. 